I'm just going to get started with a new project. I'm going to go to File, New, Sunrise Project. Here we're going to find the actual IP address of the robot that we're going to be using. So for anybody who actually has a physical robot and not just trying to learn a little bit more about the robotics theory side of things, you can go ahead and make your project name and IP address meet whatever standard you want. So here I'm just going to call it the example project series one. Excited to get started with you guys. Here we're going to have a few different robot model types. So LBR is lightweight robot, B, German, who knows, EWA versus MED. So the main difference is one is medical version of the collaborative robot and the other one is the intelligent industrial work assistant. Here we go. You can go ahead and change the media flange type, which is really helpful when you are trying to determine what kind of robot you actually are using. So should come in the media flange document you should be able to compare with what you actually have so once you have those things selected you can kind of get a quick overview of the exact project that you're creating some things like the project name or the controller type even the media flange is shown here and if you ever want to do something with the mounting orientation you can flip these robots upside down mount them to the side of a wall now we're not going to go ahead and create this wizard via the new project because I want to show you guys how to do that without creating a new project. So we uncheck that, click finish, and bam, we have a package explorer that shows our project, example project series one. So inside of this project you have a few different folders. The first one is the source folder which includes our packages. These packages are similar to containers, really useful for Java-based or object-oriented programming where we can hold all of our classes. This is a default one that comes with a specific media flange that I have, which is part of why you should make sure you know what media flange you're getting before purchasing a robot. So once you want to go ahead and create your first application, you're going to create a new package. The way you would write a package name, as you saw there, was com.sum jargon about what you want to do. Here we have com.test.applications and we're going to create a new Sunrise application. There's two main types of applications we can create. The Robotics API application, which is, as you could think of, a task that you run. Could be your main application, could be a break test, could be a referencing test, anything that the robot's going to run for the main program. Second is the background task. It's something that runs in the background, can run parallel to the robotics API application. It's something like a gripper, gr gripper, grip bar. <laughs> something simple, um, checking for different flags via IO or something like that. You can also look at some of the application examples that maybe give you some pointers on how to program. So here we're just going to go ahead and change the application type to logger. And we're going to end it with like a test. That sounds pretty good. Nice. Finally, we have our first application ever made. It's going to be an awesome one. It's called Logger Test, as you can see here. Follows normal Java structure, extends our robotics API application. That's all of the APIs that you'll need to control the robots, including velocities and acceleration and move commands. Here, they kind of set you up really quickly with a run and an initialization. These are two methods that come with every class that is a robotics um, application, like a Sunrise application. So we're not worried about moving right now. We simply want to change the name of our robot. Keep it simple. I don't love long names, so I'm going to change something more generic like robot. Sounds perfect. Once we go ahead and change that, we're going to add a static class called git logger. If you ever need help finishing something, you can always push control space. Here, this git logger implements the itask logger. That's an interface that you'll see in a few of these different methods, so you know that those will work with this class. So error is one, info is another, warning is also another one, but you can scroll through if you wanted. Look at some different things. The Java docs are super helpful in getting started, making sure you kind of understand exactly what is supposed to work and what parameters you'll need and what the method is going to actually do for you. So here we have the info. We're just going to write a quick hello world is our first application. 
And that's about all you get today, guys. So I hope that gets you started. Thanks for joining us at Discovering Robotics. <laughs> <laughs>